I expect to see a Steel Song or a Sapphire Steel deck here. The player's going to shake hands. You'll love to see it. And here we go. The final round of the Disney World Color Challenge in Bologna, Italy. Alessandro versus Lucas. Round nine, 45 minutes. Let's do it. Yeah, so Alessandro to the left. Looks like it's Sapphire Steel for Alessandro. Lucas, the player to our right. On it is going to be song. Amber Steel Song. So it's the Battle of Steel with Alessandro pairing it with Sapphire and Lucas pairing it with Steel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the, I think this is going to be a really good match. These two decks both Amber utilizing Steel. those song, uh, those uh, powerful Steel cards. Both players are probably playing a whole new world. Things like Along Came Zeus, uh, potentially Tinkerbell. So many diverse cards in the Steel set. And of course, it also gives access to things like Baboom and Fire the Cannons, which obviously gives them very good Bucky matchups or just Diablo matchups. So no surprise to see these decks doing well at the highest of levels and we'll see which of these two in combinations is going to be superior i believe it's lucas going first just by the way they're holding their hand out it speaks to me putting that aerial to the front uh nope we're going to exert the sorry ink the robin hood and we're going to exert it to play another robin hood so already setting up that potential for a turn three shift into that robin hood that can put on a lot of pressure Fire the cannons available for Alessandro, of yep. course. Could play on turn one to remove the Robin Hood instantly. But a play to look out for is that Fishbone Quill on turn three to then exert the Fishbone Quill and instantly utilize that ink to remove the Robin Hood. But the thing is, turn three might be too late. You're right, because... because Lucas, going first, can shift that Robin Hood in and then potentially sing a whole new world, discarding the Fishbone Quill and the Fire the Cannons from Alessandro's hand. So it's going to be interesting to see if Lucas can pull that play off. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, instead, opting to just get down that Fortis Sphere. Again, it's such an important card, not only for starting to dig through the deck, but there's so much synergy here with various items from Sapphire. The Tamato is going to take advantage. The Flavisham is going to take advantage. So, yeah, pretty standard openings from our player. Lucas inking and questing for one and no turn to play, which can't feel great. Yeah, pretty interesting. Looking at the hand, there's an aerial in there as one option on turn three coming in. There is a whole new world. I can't quite spot if there's that Robin Hood. They're trying to grab your swords, and there is a Robin Hood. So we see a Robin Hood inked, in fact, and that fire the cannons yeah. being really huge there from Alessandro. Going for it on turn two. Turn three would have been too late. That is an incredibly heads-up play, and you can see why Alessandro has made it so far with decision-making like that. Yeah, 100%. That was a great line to take. And, but Lucas still being able to play this aerial. I actually missed if he... Uh, was that a grab your swords that we took off of that? I also missed that one. Uh, that's see the fishbone quill come through. Sure he's that is going to be able to put a card down into the inkwell of Alessandro's choice. And it's going to be readied. And what's more, you can put uninkable cards down in there. And you don't even have to show your opponent fishbone quill a staple card in the Sapphire decks for a reason as the Fortisphere is used to spend that final ink from the Fishbone. Yeah, good turn. We're seeing an aerial. Two, yeah, so it was either a grab sword. I think he was already holding the whole new world. So I'm pretty sure it was a grab your swords that was found off the aerial. We've now found a let the storm rage on. And aerial is going to be singing whole new world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. I would love a fresh hand of seven. Alessandro discarding a Tinkerbell. Uh, a, I think that's a develop your brain. A Flavisham. Uh, and the second fire, the cannons. Yeah, and the thing for Alessandro that's really good here is they managed to get the fishbone quill down before Lucas was able to sing a whole new world. That fire the cannons denying the shift, really important. Fishbone Quill pairs so well with whole new world because yep. all those cards in hand can just be essentially two ink per turn for Alessandro by inking normally and inking with the fishbone quill. So that Fire the cannons to shut down the Robin Hood. Really, really important. Just giving Alessandro that extra turn to develop Fishbone Quill before the whole new world comes through. Yeah, absolutely. I'm expecting both players to have nice, uh, healthy hand sizes throughout most of this game. Obviously, the access to whole new world. Let the storm rage on. Aerial can find songs. And obviously, for Alessandro, as well as a whole new world, the Flavisham. So, yeah, these players should have uh, plenty of resources. Let's see how they utilize them. Yeah, Fishbone Quill has been exerted. Five ink now available for Alessandro. And of course, they have the option to ink normally this turn, getting up to six ink. There's a couple of Mickey mice in hand as well. Could be pretty interesting to see both of them come down because then Alessandro is going to have so much ink to work with. But it's a bit of a balancing act. You want to get as much ink as possible, Baker. But 
but it's also important to contest the board as much as you can as well. And Tinkerbell could be a pretty tempting option this turn. Yeah, for sure, especially since Lucas has got a bit of a board developed. We've got an aerial and a queen that are both questing for one. And of course, this aerial threatens Singer 5. The queen threatens a shift into the Floodborne Queen. And this Lawrence, who's gained a lot of popularity recently, uh, just as a really cheap three-cost character, which as long as he's not got damage on him, he has four strength and quests for two. So really great addition. We see the Mickey Mouse Detective, who's going to um, do some ramp for us. We ink the bell. And another Mickey Mouse Detective, Alessandro, is building that ink quickly. Yeah, really, really interesting decision there. Could have gone for a Tinkerbell, developed the board, but instead just deciding to be a little bit more greedy and just get that ink well as big as possible because now in a, in a turn, that extra two ink Alessandro's gained off the Mickey Mouse is going to be really, really powerful. And of course, the longer the game goes on, there's going to be many turns where Alessandro can use that two ink extra Mickey Mouse got them. And it means that each turn moving forward, Alessandro is just going to have way more ink to work with than Lucas. Their necessities comes through from Lucas, spending two for it, and Let It Go is discarded as the only non-character card, but Lucas can also just study the hand, sees the Cogsworth, the Smee, and the Tinkerbell. Yeah, three big characters, and this information is very important, knowing whether or not Alessandro has access to things like Whole New World, Grab Your Swords, these uh, big um, characters that you find in Sapphire, like not only Tamato, but some people play Simba, things like that. So, yeah, information is still very good, and he did get that hot, uh, hit of the Let It Go, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and Lucas just really taking the time to read the hand for Alessandro, make sure they yep. don't forget about anything. I definitely rate that. Yeah. It's really important. These games can go on for a very long time. So just making sure that you've got that memorized, maybe just doing like a little naming pattern of just yep. repeating the, the cards over and over, of course. The fishbone quill makes it even more difficult, though, to track the hand. Often when you ink a card, uh -huh. it's going to be revealed. But Lucas is not going to see what's inked by fishbone quill. Yeah, that secret ink can make a big difference to your opponent not knowing what resources you're burning your way through because just seeing what your opponent inks can be a read in and of itself to how you want to play the game. So as you said, Fishbone Quill, just incredibly powerful what it offers. And we're seeing a Strength for a Raging Fire hitting the ink well. Lawrence is going to, is this a quest? I'm assuming this is a quest, yeah, and the Queen's going to be joining. So that's going to be three lore gained for Lucas. He's not fully committed. He's not taking his hand off the cards yet. Yeah, Lucas just taking their time, making sure they make the right decisions. These moments in the early game are absolutely pivotal. Uh -huh. Alessandro with that big ink lead, it does mean that Lucas is going to want to try and get as much questing through as quickly as possible. Quest of Lawrence puts them up to three. It looks like the Queen might be left where they are for now, which is a pretty interesting decision. Of course, it could be challenged by both Mickey Mouse, yep. both Mickey Mice, both Mickey Mouses. I think Mickey Mice would be correct. And uh, that could be a pretty nice trade. Lucas might be wanting to shift in the Queen down the line. Does eventually decide, still aren't sure. <laughs> decision, besides not to. Yeah, it was definitely tempting, but knew that Ali Sandro could double in with those two Mickeys and take out the Queen. And yeah, I think Lucas knows that this could be very valuable, especially if he loses his aerial. He would potentially need the shift line to be the singer. So opting to just play on the uh, air on the side of caution. We're seeing Flavisham come down for Alessandro, who's going to remove that popsicle, drawing an additional couple of cards. And it was a couple of Captain Hooks. Ooh. Two Captain Hooks drawn. Not a card you see every day in Sapphire Steel. A very nice card with Mr. Smee because of the Captain Synergy, but also a good way to deal with things like Queen's Castle. Yeah, and I also like um, Captain Hook as an option just against the Ruby um, Amethyst decks that are running B-Kings and Tremains. Yep. Sometimes just having this option to extend a bit more, like over your Flavishums and Tamatoas, can be absolutely game-changing. I know if I'm facing Sapphire Steel, I do not. Uh, if you're not running a lot of low-cost characters, I'm happy. And really interesting that Alessandro is confident enough to play that Captain Hook down. It might seem like a mistake with the threat of Grab Your Sword, but let's not forget about Cogsworth on the board there, which is giving resist one to each of Alessandro's other characters. So you're going to need three damage in a single turn to remove that Captain Hook. So it is safe for now from a potential Grab Your Sword. I can see a Rapunzel in the hand here for Lucas. I think there's a couple of, and then along came Zeus. There is that Grab Your Sword as well as a Tinkerbell, I do. Oh, it's a, 
Is it a Tinkerbell? Is it an Aerial? Wow, it's it an Aerial is. Sonic Warrior! Not a card we see all the time. Pops up in some steel song lists. Six cost inkable. Um, three eight stat line. Wow. Eight big and bulky. Quest for two. She can shift five on top of another aerial. And whenever you play any song, you can pay an additional two ink to do three damage to chosen character. And of course, this aerial spectacular singer already dry on the board. So there we oh, go. We are seeing that shift. Super interesting. That's going to cost five that Lucas has already um, already exerted. The Lawrence here. Is this a quest? Probably. Lawrence is going to quest. This aerial Sonic Warrior has entered the building. What an exciting card. It is a super rare from Ursula's Return. And if Alessandro is not able to remove it and Lucas can start stringing some songs together, you can use this ability multiple times per turn. Uh -huh. And you don't even have to exert the aerial. They can just sit there, be a little bit frustrating for Alessandro to deal with. And it could be the control that Lucas needs in this position in the game to get that board control back back in their favor. Alessandro is dominating the board right now. Yeah, I think this is a huge play. Uh, unless you are a ruby deck, you really struggle to deal with this aerial with eight willpower. And yeah, I think there's a really nice inclusion. And against the, the ruby decks, you can just ink it. So yeah, the Sonic Warrior looking to do the biz. We're going to see some maths here, trying to work out how much damage he can take. He also needs to take the Cogsworth Resist 1 yep. ability into account. But is this just, is this just going to be a quest? Lucas already at five. Yep, this is going to be a quest for two to taking up to seven. So, yeah, nice start from Lucas. But as you mentioned, Alessandro has an abundance of ink. So still lots to play for. Is that just a Tinkerbell in his hand? Yeah, Tinkerbell and draws into a Flavisham. That's huge. The Toymaker Although is going to be a one great one. way to draw some more cards. Does also have the other Flavisham on the board. Yep. And I think Lucas deciding to quest of the aerial. Of course, if they challenge the Mickey Mouse, it wouldn't be removed because of the resist uh -huh. from Cogsworth. And Lucas is recognizing the position they're in. Alessandro with so much ink, the longer this game goes on, the more it's going to favor the Sapphire player. 100%. And off the top, we see a fishbone quill. Not really what he wants to see at this point in the game. Uh, obviously, ramping more is good, but we're already at a nice high ink count. Probably just want to find some big bodies to extend to the board. Down comes that Tinkerbell giant fairy. As soon as she's played, her rock the boat ability is going to do one damage to all opposing characters. So that Lawrence is now um, zero strength. Yep. Oh, and the grab swords did come down as well. I missed that. Yeah, so we played Tinkerbell and we sang grab your swords. It wasn't even sang bake. It oh, was just it played. There's that much oh. ink for Alessandro to work with. Yeah. And then Cogsworth going to remove the Lawrence. Nice. Lucas's board has been absolutely decimated, really seeing the power of Sapphire. And I think, Baker, it's coming back down to that fire the cannons, denying the Robin Hood shift on turn three. Yeah, that was big. Getting the fishbone quill down and then Lucas using the whole new world and it's just been music to Alessandro's ears. Uh, not going very well anymore. We've got uh, going to ink this Rapunzel. Down comes the Queen. Just a hard play but a very passive turn from Lucas. So Alessandro going to be very pleased with that. Yeah, and so much questing power with the Flavisham on the board as well. Going to be banishing the Fishbone Quill. Alessandro's like, yep, I've got enough ink now, but I'll take a couple of extra cards in my hand. And he just drew into a Porpsicle, which I imagine is going to come straight down. Uh, well, for Cogsworth first. And of course, we mentioned earlier, double Cogsworth on board. They do stack, so all of the other characters now will resist two, but they now provide resist for each other. So both Cogsworth having resist one. Such a powerful Sapphire card this grandfather clock. Absolutely. The Tinkerbell comes through as well. And uh, Alessandro is now at 10 ink. Sorry, 10 law. So 10 away. And on the board, they have six, eight. They have more than 10. So Lucas needs to remove quite a lot here. And of course, each character with resist two. Cogsworth with resist one. There's 11 law on board. Grab your swords does come through. Oh, but thing is, not doing any damage to any characters not named Cogsworth because yep. of the resist too. So doing that purely to put one damage on both of these Cogsworth, not the uh, most valuable high, uh, grab your swords play, but not a lot of options there. And there is Lucas scooping it up. He's going to uh, say that's enough. Let's go to game two. Alessandro showing the power of the fishbone quill, a really, really dominant performance. And again, it would have been such a different game, I think, had that Robin Hood shift come through on turn 
and three. And then a whole new world might not have given Alessandra access to that fishbone quill. And it could have been very, very different. The fire, the cannons coming in clutch. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. That was a big momentum swing and taking away that Robin Hood and instead meaning that he had to wait until turn three to play the, well, play the aerial instead on turn three, which is still not an awful move, but that Robin Hood is just a bit more secure with that three strength wouldn't have and six willpower, not as easily removed, but yeah, Alessandro benefiting from that. So he's one nil to our Sapphire Steel player. Can our Steel Song player bring one back, bring one back and make it a one all or is Alessandro are going to go take add another 2-0 to his day one score. Yep, Alessandro with that Sapphire Steel. Lucas, of course, with Amber Steel. Can't say I'm too surprised it went that way as soon no. as the Fishbone Quill stuck down, but Amber Steel, I mean, the Queen, for example, if you can get the Queen down for Lucas, you can shift into the Queen on turn two and sing a whole new world. That's yep. going to be even more difficult for Alessandro to deal with, potentially. So, going to be really interesting to see. And of course, let's not forget, Sapphire Steel is great when it draws well, but it is probably the deck in the game that can have the worst opening hands. Absolutely. If things go a little bit pear-shaped, they can go very very pear-shaped indeed. Yeah, 100%. And Alessandro, I believe, will be going first this game. I'm pretty sure that Lucas went first in the first game. Yep. So, yeah, that's going to feel pretty good for our um, Sapphire Steel player. Just a few words between the players. Nice to see them with a smile on their face. Obviously, this is the greatest, the highest level of competition in Lorcana, of course, until we get to things like the European and the Intercontinental Championships. But, yeah, this is all to play for. Round nine. Um, I'm not sure. Have they, did you notice what these players' scores were? Do they need 2-0? Unsure. Okay. Okay, we'll find out very soon, but this could be the game that makes the difference between them making top cut or not. Here we are, game two. Alessandro, I believe, will be going first. Let's see our opening mulligan. The mulligan, one of the most powerful um, things to utilize in the game of Lorcana. You can throw as many cards as you like in your opening hand to the bottom of your deck, and then you draw as many as you threw back and then reshuffle. Alessandro has the fishbone quill in hand, which is the most important thing that they're looking for. Of course, Alessandro being the player going first is going to decide their mulligan first. If Lucas so chooses, they can just wait for Alessandro to mulligan and then make their decision. And Alessandro with that fishbone quill in hand is probably not going to be that many. It's just one. Oh. And if you're Lucas and you see Alessandro Mulligan one, you're going to be pretty confident that they've got either a fishbone quill or a Mickey Mouse on turn three. Yeah, I agree. So you're probably looking for things like bare necessities was... now to try and snipe that away. So, yeah, as you say, it makes all the difference knowing that your opponent only shuffled one. Yeah. You know how aggressive you need Absolutely. to be in looking for that key piece. Yeah, bare necessities could be great. It's a great way of disrupting the fishbone quill. If Alessandro is relying on fishbone quill on three mm -hmm. and Lucas on turn two plays that bare necessities, discards it, it could really disrupt Alessandro's game plan. Little cut from both our players, and here we go. This will, uh, whoever wins, obviously today is only two game format, so this will be our final game of day one. I believe that was an Argus Inc. Great yep. counter to Flynn. Down comes the Porpsicle. I do love to be some ice cream and pass to Lucas, who's going to ink Lawrence, and down comes the Queen. So, just as you said a minute ago, this could enable an earlier whole new world play with a shift. I haven't had, been able to peek his hand yet, but yeah, the Queen's super strong. We see it develop your brain, and there's no fire the cannons coming through onto the queen this time. There is a Mickey Mouse available for Alessandro as well. So if the fishbone quill was to be discarded, they have Mickey Mouse to fall back on, which is going to be very important. Another queen inked, too exerted, and it is going to be the shift queen, and it's going to be singing, Ooh. and then along came Zeus. Goodbye, rate it. Mr. Smee. Yeah, I absolutely rate it. Smee is... <sighs> He's too much, man. There's like the best stat two drop in the game and just being able to get rid of that straight away, deny Alessandro any law, this is super nice. And of course means that this queen is incredibly likely to be safe this turn, the Sapphire Steel deck. I don't believe they have any rush characters at all. I don't believe so, at least not that sees play. <laughs> Now, what's interesting, Baker, the more I'm thinking about it, have we even seen a whole new world from Alessandro? Is it possible they're playing the a wheel, version the, of the deck without the whole new world? You could be very right. There are some very good players out there, the likes of Sky and Harlan Sweet, who really stand behind this version of Sapphire Steel without a whole new world and just saying, no, I don't want to replenish your resources. I would rather just draw cards with Flavisham and you can play a whole new world. And some players it's done that very well for. Yeah, absolutely. And we see the aerial come through. Going to look at the top 
top four cards of the deck can reveal a song card of the choice. There is a couple. There's a whole new world. If you grab your swords, Lucas going to put the whole new world into their hand. And Alessandra, of course, is now going to be fully aware of that being an option. But to be fair, a whole new world, not that great against the Fishbone Quill as we saw in the previous game. Alessandro might not have a whole new world of their own, but Lucas is quite willing to play it for them, it seems. Yeah, and I'm sure he'd be perfectly happy with that. We've got quite a high um, mid-range hand, a Cogsworth, a Flavisham, and an Along Came Zeus. So you've got to think that Alessandro is going to look to play something, uh, ink something, and he could potentially, potentially empty his hand depending on what he draws here lucas with the first law on the board two law with the queen going on a quest and it's going to be back on over to alessandro currently at four ink can get to six ink this turn by just inking normally from hand and then utilizing the power of the fishbone quill and that would open up to either Cogsworth or that Flavisham if he decides that he doesn't value the quill. No, it is going to be Cogsworth that comes down. Makes sense to me. Make as much, make use of as much ink of, uh, of much uh, as much of your ink as possible. Sorry, it's yeah. been a long day. And, uh, <laughs> Alessandro also could have just inked the card normally, but instead just utilising the fishbone quill to hide as much information as possible. It's another aerial, and this time it's a bust. Aerial not hitting a song for Lucas. All four cards going onto the bottom of the deck. Yeah, that can't feel great. He is still holding that copy of a whole new world that we know he's got. And yeah, the fact that he missed that that hit. Oh, he's holding Rapunzel. So that may be a way he wants to utilize draw instead of playing the whole new world. But no, it looks like it's on its way into the ink. Well, it certainly is. So I imagine we're seeing whole new world this turn. Yeah, the hand is two whole new worlds and a grab your swords. Yep. Not exactly what you're hoping for when you're staring down a Cogsworth and a Fishbone Quill. So has already spent three ink this turn as well on that aerial. One ink still available with Rapunzel. A lot of the time after you're seeing a whole new world, you want to try and get a lot of cards down on the board. Yep. And that's just yep. not going to be possible for Lucas with only one ink available. And also interesting to say that this queen on the board, really strong ability to give one character minus four, one character plus four strength, is a nice way of helping to deal with this Cogsworth. Could, if, if the Cogsworth does exert, then the queen can quest and give a plus four strength to any of the characters on board, which would be pretty nice. But he's just going to opt to be patient after inking the Rapunzel, just play a whole lot of nothing. And Lucas is going to be hoping that there's no card draw, but the Flavisham is a great option for Alessandro. No need for whole new world oh. when you have the toy maker. And the beast hard-headed in the deck there. Good for not only popping these items, but it is just a five-cost character that quests for two and can sing five-cost songs. That along came Zeus is going to remove that queen. That can't feel good for Lucas. That queen, I think, was important. Obviously, Ariel can sing, but that queen really helps to control the board with strength. Could have been able to take out this Cogsworth. And, of course, Flavisham has six willpower. But where there's an Ariel, there's a way. We probably sing a whole new world. Oh, there's a Let Storm Rage on. A Grab your swords. Grab your swords would only do one damage to the uh, the characters that aren't Cogsworth. Yeah, yeah. The resist of Cogsworth really impressive. Huge. And it is exerted though, so it could be a good opportunity for Lucas to try to remove it. Yeah. Of course, both aerials could challenge. Uh, it can't be targeted Cogsworth with the let the storm rage on. And a problem for them is that they don't have the ink available either, so they can sing the whole new world. That is what it is going to be. I don't think Lucas is too happy about oh. it. And look at Alessandro. Yeah, 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 I he saw is that. chuffed. Yeah, I saw that. But yeah, both players are going to draw a fresh seven cards, and Lucas now can utilize all of his ink. He has another aerial on the board that can still sing, and that's a nice song, uh, hand of songs. Two Storm Rage on, one Strength for a Raging Fire, and we see a Queen, a Vanessa Ursula, uh, who's going to make our way into the ink well. Yeah, not a bad um, hand of songs, but again, Alessandro slightly higher on the ink and already a bit more of a developed board. Yeah, five inks still available for Lucas here. Quite a few songs still available as well if they want to try and get some more control options. Of course, Cogsworth not targetable thanks to its ward ability. It looks like two ink is going to be spent by Lucas here. Ursula Vanessa is a card in hand. I just... Deciding. It looks like they may be leaning towards the Queen for five. We saw the Queen get removed by Cogsworth singing Zeus in the previous turn, but there's another Queen for Lucas. But now Alessandro, instead of just having a couple of cards in hand, Baker, has eight. 
Yeah, the whole new world was necessary for Lucas, but as you said, wasn't happy about it, knew that he was throwing away a couple of important cards and giving Alessandro an entire new hand. But not that choice. If the Flavisham's on board, there's a couple of items. It's going to happen inevitably anyway. So Lucas deciding just to go ahead and play it. Let's refresh our hands and hopefully I come out on top. And this queen being redeveloped, I think, is really important. As I said before, help to take out the Cogsworth, help to take out the Flavisham. I'm a big fan of this queen. Fishbone Quill still down on the board for Alessandro, and it is going to be exerted. Alessandro being able to ink two cards per turn, while Lucas is only able to ink one per turn. That is the power of Sapphire. I was pretty interested to see if Alessandro ever would decide to go for the double Fishbone Quill, mm -hmm. but decides to tuck it away into the inkwell as the hidden choice, and then shows Lucas the fact that they're inking the Rise of the Titans. Yeah, good card for the Sapphire Steel players because they can really struggle, particularly against the Queen's Castle in Amethyst deck, so it's a nice answer to that. Not hugely relevant in this matchup. Are we going to see the third ink from Alessandro? Because Bell Ability, we certainly are. Three cards going into the inkwell for Alessandro this turn. Really powerful part of the ability is Flavisham is going to replenish the hand even further for Alessandro. Sapphire is absolutely dominating Am right now. Yeah, just look at this board and the Captain Smee is going to go into the aerial, going to take two damage and thankfully because that Captain Hook is on the board, Smee won't have to take any damage. So he uh, will... So oh, and the resist one. I forgot that in a game earlier as well. Yeah, only taking one damage. So super strong play there from Alessandro and this can't feel too good for Lucas. Still has some options, but Alessandro is so ahead in ink. He's got a huge board. He's got Cogsworth providing resist, two Flavishams to help draw and that Bell... Uh, uh, are we at 10 ink, did you say? There's, there's a lot of ink, Baker. It might be even more than 10. I think this bell <laughs> is, is going to be ready to go in quest for five. Alessandro going to be able to keep inking, but of course that and then along came Zeus is going to be a pretty efficient answer to remove it. Also the option of strength of a raging fire if they can get five characters down. Yep. Bell, four willpower, but resist one currently due to that Cogsworth. Yep, but this Zeus will still get the job done. We put down an Ursula Vanessa with that Singer 4 keyword. And then we're just going to pay for a long game Zeus using our ink, doing four damage because of the resist, as you, as Joe just said. Get rid of that bell. Bye-bye, Bell. Bye-bye, Bell. And we might see her again. Maybe. We'll see. And we've still got Ariel and Queen on board waiting to see what they do. I very much doubt he's going to let, let them be vulnerable. He wants this Queen to help him take out the Cogsworth and to take out the Flavisham. Yeah, Alessandro got that first win. They're chasing that bonus point and those seven points total in the final round of Swiss here. Disney Law can challenge Bochum. Uh, Bologna, in fact. But remember, not only are these players fighting for the top 64 cut, the more points they get, the higher seed they'll be, yeah. which can be so, so crucial going into day two. Develop Your Brain is a card I'm really excited to see in a deck that isn't playing a whole new world. You're lacking that little a bit of card draw options we see a gaston in there as well mm -hmm. so while alessandro doesn't it looks like they're not playing any whole new worlds they have adapted their deck to have a little bit of more consistency with yep. things like develop your brain and gaston you can often chain these cards together and it's just a really really interesting deck build i love to see those slightly different takes on the established meta decks yeah i agree and especially in a deck like sapphire steel where lucky dime 99 percent of the time is the most important card in the deck and it can allow you to go from zero law to 20 law in just a couple of turns. Me and Ross saw that in a previous game. So, yep, I respect it. More cards that are going to help us find that important lucky dime. Down comes a wow. Tinkerbell. Oh, and the grab your swords alongside that, wiping at Lucas's board. Oh, that can't feel good for him. Yeah, it is absolutely brutal. And let's not forget as well, okay, the Ursula Vanessa yeah. remains. <laughs> let's not forget, a grab your swords from Lucas would hardly remove anything from, in fact, it wouldn't remove anything from Alessandro's board because oh. every character apart from Cogsworth himself has resist one and that is the oh. game Lucas says it's all yours Alessandro Sapphire Steel coming out on top in dominant fashion seven points secured for Alessandro what a performance what a performance and I think for Alessandro this is about as good as he could hope for in